What's happening guys? Today we're talking about buses. No, not these kind of buses. We're talking about audio buses in DaVinci Resolve. So I get a lot of questions about them and they're not as hard as you think. Of course, it can get complicated, right? But the concept of it is not that complicated. All right, so the first thing that you need to know about buses is that a bus is nothing more than a group of audio channels. Not a big deal. It's just grouping channels together. Maybe you put all your vocal channels together. Maybe you put all your sound effects channels together. Maybe uh, it's your music or however you want to group your channels in DaVinci Resolve. A bus is going to allow you just to group them together so you can make changes to all those tracks at once. For example, you've got all your vocal tracks. You set your levels. Everything's good. You got good levels on individual tracks. Now, let's say you need to raise or lower that volume a little bit of all your audio tracks. Well, if you have them all getting sent into one bus, not that bus then you can just raise and lower that one bus you don't have to go to every individual channel to change the settings or and boost or lower the volume of that individual channel so buses are super helpful if you want to make global adjustments to more than one channel at a time so keep that in mind that's the basics of buses it makes it super easy to just put things together in a group they're linked together and you can make global changes to all those tracks with one bus so that's one way that you can use buses. So in DaVinci Resolve, depending on what version you're in, you might have buses set up the old school way, kind of like this bus, or you might have buses set up well, maybe a little more new school, kind of like this bus. At least I think these are older and newer. But anyway, in DaVinci Resolve 16, the buses were set up a little bit different than they are now in 17. So let's jump back into the studio. We're gonna take a look at how the buses are set up now and just refer back to how they were in 16 because if you're not upgraded to 17, I would recommend that you do because there's just that many good features in 17 and we're actually on 17.2 now as of the filming of this video. So let's jump back into the studio, talk some more about buses, break it down a little bit more and uh, hopefully clarify any questions you guys might have. Just a real quick note for you guys, while we are talking about the buses, I'm sure you're gonna have questions and there's gonna be things that I'm not gonna cover that uh, you guys might still have questions on. So leave a comment below. This is not the end all be all about buses. It's just to try and give you a little more information and a little bit better understanding of what they are, how they work and how you might be able to use them here in Resolve. So if you have any questions, definitely leave a comment down below and uh, I'll help answer them the best that I can. All right, let's get back to it. All right, so more about buses. I do have some questions here. This paper is wrinkled up because I can't tell you how many times I've tried to film this video and man, things just don't work out and it's just things aren't recording and whoa, struggles of a YouTuber. Anyway, let's get into buses here. So legacy busing system, what was it like in DaVinci Resolve 16? And if you're still using that, here's what you're going to see when you're working with buses. You're going to see mains, you're going to see submixes, and you're also going to see auxiliaries. Now in DaVinci Resolve 17, you can still do all that same stuff. It's just that now it's a flexible bus system and you've got the option to assign any bus to anything that you want. Whereas in 16 and earlier, you had only certain options and you had to pick a particular type of bus in order to use, you know, like a uh, submix. You had to pick a submix bus. Now you just add a bus and you can make it whatever you want. So now that just has more flexibility when you're trying to set up your buses. So I think the easiest way is not only are we going to answer some of your questions that are here, but let's just jump in Resolve and just kind of talk through the buses a little bit how you can set up different buses and the windows that you're going to be looking at when you're working with buses to make sure you're getting audio out of DaVinci Resolve to uh, patch tracks to a particular bus and why you might be doing that. All right, I'm going to grab me my little headphones here so I can hear what's going on in Resolve. All right, so buses. When we're in Resolve, when you first start a project up, we're talking DaVinci Resolve 17 here. You first start the project up, you should see bus one automatically come up. Now, bus one is the main output coming out of DaVinci Resolve, and that's what's going to get your sound out of Resolve. Now, a lot of people have been having issues with not being able to get sound out of Resolve, and sometimes they don't see the bus one. Sometimes it's just not uh, getting any audio from your other tracks. And sometimes it's not even there. I can't, I, I can't see it. I don't know where it is. I don't know what to do. So the first thing is you want to make sure you've got your bus one, right? If you don't see it here, the next thing I would check is come on up to uh, index at the top here. And then when you're looking at the index, you see each one of these tracks and buses, this is our main bus out, right here has a little eyeball. If that eyeball is turned off, Notice down in my mixer, we're not going to see our bus one main output. So make sure that that's turned on. So you should be seeing your bus one. Now, the next thing we need to do is how do we send anything to that bus one? Because if nothing is getting sent to this bus one, nothing's coming out of resolve. That's just how it works. We need to have one point where everything comes in and then gets sent out of resolve. So that is this bus one. Now, what I'm going to do is actually rename this. So it kind of helps make a little more sense for us. So I can do that by just double clicking here. I'm gonna call this main out. Okay, main out. That makes a lot more sense than just some random bus one, right? All right, so main out. 
Now, if we take a look at my audio channels, now I already have these uh, audio tracks, I should say, being sent to my main output. So I've got a GoPro track with me talking here. The, how I can tell it's getting sent there is right here, bus outputs. So in your mixer, if you don't have your mixer open, right here, you should know that by now, but uh, in our mixer, scroll down, you should see bus outputs. If you don't see bus outputs, click these three little dots here and make sure you've got the bus outs turned on. So then you're gonna see that bus outputs. Now, each one of my tracks needs to get sent somewhere so the audio comes out of DaVinci Resolve. So here you can see it's assigned to the main out. Perfect, that works out great. Now this little button here, you know, turns it on and off. So if I turn it off and I play now, nothing's coming out of Resolve. You can see nothing's even showing up on my meter here for my main out. But if I go ahead and turn it on. Complicated, right? But the concept of... Boom, there we go. We, meter's moving, we're getting audio out of DaVinci Resolve. So those are the first things I check if you're having problems with getting any audio out of Resolve. The next thing you might wanna take a look at is uh, right up here in your toolbar, you got main out. Now I only have one bus set up right now, but you're gonna see, we're gonna have other options here in a few minutes. So make sure that this main out or your bus one is being sent to the main. Let's say you check those things, it's still not working and I'm not hearing anything. What else can we check? Well, you're gonna to wanna to check your patch settings, right? So this is just gonna make sure that your bus that should be sending everything out is actually sending everything out. So come on up to Fairlight, come on down to patch input output. And now you're gonna see here we have source, we have bus out, and then we have our main out left and right. And over here, we've got our audio outputs under our destination. And here it's uh, the control room, right? Mine says Telestream because that's the screen recording software I'm using. But uh, let's say if I did not have these patched together and now I try and play through my uh, audio clip here, now notice, we've got both meters moving and I can't hear anything. Don't hear nothing because nothing's actually getting sent to the control room, which sends it out of DaVinci Resolve. So if I bring this window back up and I just repatch these guys here, I select them all, hit patch. Put all your vocal channels together. There we go. We got audio coming out of DaVinci Resolve now. So that's what you're gonna wanna check if you're not getting anything, but you see the meters moving, okay? So that's how we just make sure everything's coming out of DaVinci Resolve. Now, if you're still having problems, here's what I'd recommend. Just create a new bus, create a new output from DaVinci Resolve. And there's a few windows we're gonna use to do that. So if we wanna add buses, so whether it's a new main bus, whether it's a, a sub mix or anything like that, this is how we're gonna do it. You're gonna come on up to the Fairlight menu, come on down to bus format. Now this is where you're gonna add in new buses and you can add in as many as you want. Click bus as many times as you want, right? So I'm gonna undo that. I'm just gonna add, uh, let's just add uh, one bus for now. Let's start with a submix, right? I wanna make a new submix. If you wanna add a new main out, we're gonna cover that in a minute, but let's talk submix first. So I'm gonna come up here, I'm just gonna double click this guy. I'm gonna say uh, submix, gonna hit enter. I want it to be stereo. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. Now that should appear in your mixer. If you don't see it, just grab the edge of your mixer. Whoop, pull that guy out like that. And you should see it right here, submix. Close my index, give us a little more room. Now let's say I wanted to send my GoPro and my two music tracks to a submix. Why might I want to do that? Let's just say I wanted to apply one effect that would uh, you know, cover all those tracks. You know, I don't know, that's just for whatever reason, say I want to put delay on there, right? I can add it once in a submix and then it gets applied to everything within that submix, right? Now I would do that instead of doing a you know delay on every single track because then you've just got to make more adjustments and if everything's going to be the same then typically you might do something like this with say reverb on uh dialogue or vocal tracks on vocal tracks in, in singing you know you throw reverb and i want the same reverb on all my tracks so i would send them to a, a submix and apply it once to that submix so how do i do that if i'm looking at my audio tracks here i can just come to my bus outputs click on the plus and you can add a submix right here. Now it's gonna send it there. Now I don't want them to also go to the main out, so I'm gonna turn that one off. Now if I play through it, you can see my, my meter here on the GoPro is moving and my submix meter is moving. Nothing on the main out because nothing's getting sent to the main out, right? I'm only sending it to my submix. And let's just say that I wanted my music tracks to go to the submix as well. I'm gonna turn off these guys. Okay, so I can do that. And now I've got my submix and now I need to send my submix to my main output, right? Just think about this. All this is how are we routing and where is our audio going? Think about the path of where are we sending it? Once I've got it in my submix here, I can come in, I can add some effects, I can you know, do some dynamics or EQ, whatever. And then I wanna send it to that main out. So to do that, pretty easy. Just come to your bus outputs, click on the little plus here, and then you can come on over here to main out. Go ahead and click on that. Now it's getting sent to the main out. So when I play through this, we should hear it no problem. About buses here in DaVinci Resolve. And if I jump ahead, we should hear all three tracks. Channel to change the settings or... And there you go. So we can, it works out just fine. So again, I might use this submix because I might want to, you know, apply something to all three of these tracks. And that's the benefit of creating a submix like this. 
So now let's get back to that main out question. Say you don't have one, you need to create a new main out. Instead of trying to troubleshoot, just create a new one. Here's how to do that. So come on up to Fairlight, come on down to Bus Format, and we're gonna go ahead and add a bus. Now I'm just gonna call this uh, new main, and I want it to be stereo. And I'm gonna hit OK. Again, I'm gonna cover, expand out, expand out my mixer a little bit, and we see right here we've got our new main. And we can always tell which bus is which because at the top of the uh, mixer here, it's gonna tell us bus one, two, and three. And down here, it's gonna tell us the specific name of whatever we called it, just to kind of help keep things a little bit clearer, right? Now let's say I want to send my submix to this new main out, right? So I'm gonna get rid of this guy. Click on here, and I'm going to go to New Main. So now if I play through it, notice we're not hearing anything coming out of Resolve. So because we're not hearing anything, what we need to do is patch that New Main out to our control room so that the audio is coming out of DaVinci Resolve. So we're going to jump back into our patch settings to do that. So come on up to Fairlight. Come on down to Patch Input Output. That'll bring up this window for us. And right now, our main uh, outs that we originally had are right here. But we want to use this New Main left and right. And under Destination... Got our audio outputs. I'm gonna select these guys and I'm gonna say patch. So now we got rid of our old ones and now our new main is patched to come out of DaVinci Resolve. So let's just close this and let's play through and see if we got anything coming out of Resolve here. Volume of that individual channel. So buses are super helpful. So there we go. Now we have our new main output coming out of Resolve. It's pretty easy to set it up. So if you're having problems, you don't see your bus one, just make a new one here. It's pretty easy, pretty straightforward, and it should work just fine for you. But you are gonna need to check all of your audio tracks to make sure that they're going to your new main. So for example, if you didn't have a submix here, I would click on the little plus, make sure that my track is getting sent to my new main. So if I turn, let's just turn all these guys off here. So this is going right to my new main, my GoPro now, so let's play. If you wanna make global adjustments to more than one channel, there you go. So now we're still getting audio out of our new main output from DaVinci Resolve. So hopefully that helps you if you're not seeing your bus one or any audio coming out of DaVinci Resolve. So you might be thinking, okay, well, I see the uh, the bus outputs down here and you can see I actually deleted all, all of my uh, channels and where they're getting sent, but I've also got bus sends up here. What's the difference between a bus send and a bus output? So a bus output and a bus send are kind of going to do very similar things, right? Bus sends is going to send your channel to wherever you want. And it's both of these things are just going to give you different routing options. So you can have your audio go to multiple places at once. Now, I'd say stick with the bus outputs. That's probably going to be the easiest. And uh, honestly, probably for the most part, you're not going to be using most of this stuff. But it's good to just understand kind of how it works a little bit. So a lot of times the bus sends are used when you're sending your uh, audio tracks out to something like, uh, you know, maybe an external effects uh, rack or something like that. It's sending it out of Resolve, and then you'll send that back in once it runs through whatever your effects are. So you can do that with, uh, you know, the buses here. You can have an effects bus, say I want uh, reverb on all my vocal tracks. I'm gonna take those, I'm gonna send them to that uh, bus and then I'm an effects bus and then I'm gonna bring it back into you know another bus and it can get confusing. And again, it's all about routing. Where do you want all of your tracks to go? How do you wanna organize it? Do you want it to go to multiple places? Are you layering things? It can get real deep. And honestly, that's way over my head too. So I just do basics with the buses here. I do make sub mixes sometimes. It can come in handy when you're working with like sound effects and things. Maybe you've got tons of tracks of sound effects. You want to send it all in one bus so you can, uh, you know, boost lower the volume. If you need to, you know, apply, I don't know, global compression or whatever it might be, you've got the ability to do that. So it really just depends on what you're trying to do and where you want your audio to go and whether you're going to use the bus sends or the bus outs. Now, the main outs, right, anything coming out of DaVinci Resolve are always going to be a bus out. Keep that in mind. So one other thing you might want to think about and be aware of is VCA groups. So you might be like, hey, what's a VCA group, Jay? I never heard of that. So a VCA group is, again, a group of channels, but the only thing different about that group of channels is that you can only affect the volume using the faders. So let's say I've got, uh, you know, three different uh, vocal tracks. I've set uh, the levels, you know, at different points or set the faders for those tracks you know, at different points. And actually, you know, let's jump into Resolve here. I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about here because it'll just make more sense to see it. So let's just say, for example, I want these three tracks to go together. And you can see I've set the faders at different levels here. Just for example's sake, um, you know, you can adjust the volume on these clips too. It, it Again, a million ways to do things here in DaVinci Resolve. Just what works best for you, right? So let's say I've got these faders there. Now, I want these all grouped together so that I can grab all these faders and like move them up and down at the same time, right? Say I need to boost everything up but I want to keep the relationships between them the same. You can use a VCA group to do that. You can use a bus too, but we're talking VCA groups right now. So in order to do that, 
right here you've got group. And if you don't see group, again, click on the three dots. You can find group there. But click on it. And I've already named one uh, vocals here. So I'm going to click that. It would say group one by default. And let's just say I want all these guys to go together. Now, if I pull out my mixer a little bit, you're going to notice right here we've got a vocal group now. And like I said, double click on it. You can name it whatever you want. That's just fine. But one thing you'll notice is if you look up the track here, at the top it's called a VCA group, not a bus. And I have no options to change anything like EQ or effects or insert anything. No options to do that. The only option I have is this fader right here. Now, if I click on the fader and I drag it down, you can see it proportionately changes all of the faders of the tracks that are assigned to this group. So again, it's a group of channels and it allows me to keep those faders. It's like grabbing them all at once and bringing them up and bringing them down, right? And you might notice, well, hey, when they get down towards the bottom, uh, these move uh, faster than those. Well, that's because at the bottom of your faders here, uh, you know, you have less space between, you know, 10 decibels right here versus, you know, 10 decibels right here. It's just the way that faders work. So that's how you can adjust the volume of multiple tracks. Maybe you've got tons of sound effect tracks and you have each sound effect set at a good level where you want it. Well, you can throw them all into a VCA group. And if you need to raise or lower the volume of all of them as a whole, a VCA group is a great way to do that. And again, you can do it with a bus. You just, however you want to set things up. So I hope this is helping you just kind of clarify what buses are, how they work, what a VCA group is, how that works. And uh, let's go through some of the questions that you guys have here. And uh, hopefully I answered most of them. If not, we'll take a look here. So what is a bus? We basically talked about that as basically a group of channels and that's getting sent somewhere, right? You've got group channels going to a bus. You can do effects. You can do dynamics. You can send it out of DaVinci Resolve. It's just grouping things together and sending it where you want it to go. Difference between a bus send and a bus out. We kind of talked about that a little bit. Bus send a lot of times is sending it out of the program to like an effects rack or something like that. You can send it to another bus or whatever. It's just routing audio in different ways. Where do you want it to go? What do you want it to do? And a lot of times sending it all over the place is going to be over most people's heads and you're not going to need to do it, but it's just kind of good to know how it works a little bit. Some people have questions on, you know, DaVinci Resolve 16 versus 17 in the buses. So in 16, you had mains, you had submixes, and you had auxiliaries, and you had to select which bus you wanted when you were setting it up. In 17, like we talked about, it's just flexible. You can make any bus, whatever you want, and route things however you want. So I'd recommend sticking with 17. Hey, we're moving ahead into the future. Don't get stuck in the past, right? They're only going to improve on what we've got. So stick with where it's at now, learn that. And as we move forward, I'm sure they're going to make improvements and make it better. But if you're using that and you got some projects with it, keep it. It's fine. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. It definitely works. But my recommendation would be stick with 17 and learn the new system so that uh, you're up to date with everything moving forward. The bus format window, people had questions on that. That's where you're going to make new buses. You can make as many as you want. Well, not as many as you want, but you can make a lot of them. So you're going to go Fairlight, bus format, and that's where all of your buses are going to be created. Then you had the bus assign window. People had questions on that. Take a quick look over here. So the bus assign, again, it's under Fairlight. You've got bus assign right here. That's going to bring up this window for you. Now we have all of our buses at the top here and you've got all your available tracks down here on the bottom. So kind of similar to how we came to the bus outputs here and we could, you know, patch different things. So for example, I want to make this go to my main out, right? Now, if I come back to my bus assign window, you're going to see now my uh, GoPro track is getting sent to the B1O, which is bus one out, right? It's going to say B1S for send, B1O for out. So you can map things and route things wherever you want right here. If it's easier for you to look at a view like this, you can do that. Or you can do it right over here in your bus outputs as well as your bus sends right here. Different ways to do things like so many things in Resolve. You just got to find a way that works best for you. That's the easiest. That makes the most sense for you. Another question was about the patch settings. Again, that's where you're going to go to make sure that your audio is getting sent out of DaVinci Resolve. If you don't hear anything, you see the meters moving, you're like, I can't hear anything. Go check out those patch settings and you should be able to fix it up and get the audio going to the right spot so it's coming out of the program and you can hear it. That also goes along with making sure your computer system is set up right. You've got your sound settings set right as well as in the preferences of DaVinci Resolve, you got that set right too. So if you got any questions on that, I've got other videos on that. You can go check that out. Link above over here. We talked about how to make a new main output. So if you're having troubles with, with the bus one, you can't find it, whatever it might be, just create a new one. Set it up again. It's not that hard. You guys can do this. You got this. And if you have any questions, definitely leave a comment below about that. And the last one I had on here is VCA versus a bus. I think we kind of talked about that. VCAs are only going to adjust the volume. 
Pluses give you more options for dynamics and EQ and effects and that kind of stuff. So that's kind of the main difference there between VCA groups and buses. All right, guys, that is it for this one. I am going to crumble this paper up for probably the 10th time of trying to make this video. I hope this was helpful in just helping you understand a little bit about the buses, how they work, how things get routed around, and how you can kind of try and troubleshoot when things aren't working for you. Now, I'm sure you're going to have questions. This is not the end all be all about buses. I'm just trying to share some more information with you guys so you have a better understanding how it all works. So leave comment down below if you got questions you're not sure how something's working you're having problems i'll do my best to help you out sometimes it's hard though you know without being able to actually see your project and stuff but um leave a comment and i'm going to help you out the best that i can so if you learned just a little something out of this video go ahead and give it a thumbs up for me subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and for probably the 10th 15th i don't even know how many times i've made this video i will see you guys in the next video peace